Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Kairos and welcome back once again to Let's Play Silent Hunter 4. We're ready for another patrol and uh, last episode we got home and I got awarded this nice Navy Cross here. Now I'm not an expert on the American Honor System, but I do believe this is the second or third highest award you can get in the United States Navy, so that's not bad. Correct me if I'm wrong there, I'm not an expert on, on US medals, but uh, that's good. We've got uh, a few promotions and medals that I've handed out here. So we've got a few more engineers on board, which is good. Uh, hopefully that will improve things a little bit. And there are no upgrades. I've checked for upgrades as always and nothing as of yet that we can uh, kit our submarine out with. Torpedoes are loaded up, ready to go. And uh, yeah, everything's ready. So let's see where they want us to potter around this time. So June 19th at the moment. Uh, Lewis C. Davison of the USS Seal, you are to proceed to area F7 and engage in anti-shipping operations within the designated area in the Macasa Strait for five days. That's just here. So that's, that should be a pretty good spot for shipping um, right here. P hopefully we'll catch something coming into or out of Surabaya, which of course is occupied by the Japanese now. Uh, interestingly, they're not going to send us off until July 19th, so we're going to have a full month in port, which is... Uh, Fine. I guess that gives the crew time to find themselves some Australian girlfriends. Although personally, I'd recommend American girls. They're much more fun. Anyhow, let's get uh, let's get on uh, on with this, and I will see you on the other end of the loading screen. Okay. Well, it's uh, July twenty first now. I've just spent the last two days sailing up the coast of Australia. We have um, some news here. Uh, Japanese forces have landed in New Guinea. Apparently, the Australian commander vows not to let them keep it. Well. Well said, definitely not. We're not going to let them have New Guinea. Why should we let them have New Guinea? Um, I'm sure the uh, local people would agree with me there as well. So uh, New Guinea was, of course, an area where Australians fought quite extensively. It's, you know, this whole area, actually, obviously. You can see how close these islands are. Um, and this was the last line of defense, really, for, uh, for uh, the Commonwealth um, nations, I think. Uh, Port Moresby's just there, so that's a big a big area for Australian history, if you're interested in that sort of thing. Um, anyhow, we're going to keep going. We've still got a few days before we get up into the Savu Sea here, which is where we, we might get some action. Don't forget, we, we sank that merchant raider in the Timor Sea last episode. Um, so not much else to report. I'm just going to head up there, listen to the radio. We've got lovely calm seas, good sailing. We're making a nice, reasonable uh, 10 knots, which is fine. And uh, we'll just continue up in this general direction, and we're going to take a safe route through the Sabu Sea and up past Timor, and then, then we're going to turn uh, to the west and head towards the Flores Sea and up to our patrol, up to our patrol grid. So that's a bit of sailing to do yet, but uh, we'll uh, we'll spend the time wisely, practicing our crash dives, doing all the things that you're supposed to do. So I'll see you when we have some action. Moving about one third of the First Marine Division to familiarize the troops with boarding landing crafts and unloading cargo. All accounts say the test was a failure. Among other problems, the transport ships coming directly from the U.S. were not packed for combat unloading. Today, the Marines departed Fiji for an undisclosed destination. The 82 ships of the invasion force were benefiting from the bad weather cover, although that certainly creates dreadful conditions for our brave soldiers aboard. Okay, it's July 28th and uh, we've just got our first sonar contact. We're north of uh, Flores here, so we've uh, managed to get past Timor without any trouble, but um, this could be a neutral ship. We've had a couple of reports in this area of neutral ships uh, going around, um, so possibly nothing to shoot at, but it's definitely worth investigating. Uh, you guys know the drill. We just go and change course here. I'm just going to move that course marker there, and the man should turn the boat. Let's go ahead full. If I can get that up, there we go. Um, and I should put time compression down to normal. There we go, much better. Okay, let's have a look outside, shall we? Now, yes, we had beautiful calm seas a little while ago, but it seems to have got a little choppy since then. So um, I guess we're just gonna have to, uh, to make the most of it. Uh, pretty good visibility though, nice clear night. All right, well, let's uh, head up this way. This might be a bit of a radio program uh, again, because night attack, but that's okay. 
uh, we can certainly listen. And uh, the good thing about night attacks is that you can see the explosions better. So hopefully we'll have some uh, some fireworks. Let's uh, head up here and see what we're dealing with, first of all. Might mark where, uh, where she is. I'm going to get my sonar man to track it. And uh, it's actually heading in the other direction. Um, I assume she was going... Uh, I assume she was going east. She's actually going west. So maybe she is the enemy then. Okay, well, just taking her speed. I think uh, eight and a half knots is what we're dealing with here. And she's getting remarkably close. So I think we might actually go to periscope depth now. Um, let's just have one more look in this and see. Well, what do we think we're dealing with? A T2, a T3 class tanker. And I think that's what it is. In all honesty, that, that does look like what we're dealing with. So I think we'll go to periscope depth for this one. Uh, I just have a bad feeling about staying up here. So let's do that now. And we'll go to action stations in a moment as well. Um, while we're doing this, let's start getting the course set up. She doesn't seem to have noticed us quite yet. So that's just ready to go. Eight and a half knots, huh? Let's get, sounds like we're just getting under the waves right now. Uh, look at this fella's demon eyes, will you? I mean, that is a man possessed by something of, well, not of this earth. But that's okay, I don't mind him navigating for me. I mean, demons navigating, you know, I'm sure they know what they're doing. Uh, now then, let's... That sounds like the electric engine's kicking in, so I think we're ready to raise the scope. Up we go. Oh my, it is very rough out here. You're not going to be seeing much here, so I'm not going to bore you with this uh, looking through the scope nonsense too much. But uh, suffice to say, I think we can call that a, yeah, a T3. I mean, the only other thing it is, let's look at the stack. The only other thing it could be, let's do a little bit of quick identification here. A large European oil, it's not one of those, I don't think. Or is it? Uh, blast it, maybe it is. Let's have a look at the rigging here. The only way I'm gonna, it doesn't look like it actually. The rigging's all wrong. I think it is, I think it's this monstrous tanker here. Then again, maybe not. I'll go through these. I'm going to go through all the ships on this um, on this uh, recognition manual here, just to see whether there's anything similar that I might be mistaking it for. But I am convinced, although it may be just wishful thinking on my part, I'm convinced that it is a um, T3 tanker. It's not a modern tanker. While we're doing this, let's go to battle stations. Um, Whoops, where am I? I've lost my place now. There you are. Much better. Okay, they are getting quite close. We need to be careful here. Yeah, I think it is a T3 tanker. I don't think it could be anything else. The rigging looks a little wrong, but um, I think that's fine. Right, you look in the scope, please, Chief. I'm going to have a go at this thing here. What are we dealing with? Uh, I'm a little bit off with the, with the, um, we're going to do something like that. I'm a little bit off with the angle on bow, but he thinks the 5455. So should we enter that? Let's start doing this solution now, shall we? I am going to say it's a, a T3 tanker. Uh, we are going to need that back in, however, because, sorry about this. this is, there's no faster way to do this. We're going to need that back because... Um, I'm sure that clicking is driving you absolutely insane. Uh, but we need it up so I can see what the draft is. Although, I'm probably not going to use, um, the magnetic pistols this time. What the hell? I bet you I was right next to it and I went the wrong way. That <laughs> there we go, finally found it. Okay, so it's got quite a shell, uh, deep draft of 35 feet. Um... I'm convinced that's what it is. 
I'm truly convinced that that's what it is. So let's uh, make sure that's entered. Yes, it is. So we can close that now. Let's set up these torpedoes. Let's let's uh, let's do this by the book, shall we? Let's let's have these all set. We're going to fire everything we got, and we're going to set them all for under 35 um, feet. So let's set this one for 32 and low speed influence. This one's set for 30, let's say 32, 33. This one can be set for, that's fine. And this one can go a little bit lower. About that, that should be fine, a few feet below, just in case I've, I've got something wrong. So there we go, that, sh that should be absolutely fine. Um, I wonder if in reality uh, they, the commanders set them for different depths, so you know to try and maximise the chance of getting something. Um, you can let me know in the comments if anyone knows about that and how the how the torpedoes were actually used. Uh, we are getting really quite close, so I can slow down this engine now. And of course, the faster we go, um, the more likely we are to get spotted because we're leaving a wake with that periscope. I don't really need it up much longer, so I can drop it soon. I really do hope that this uh, recording is on. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> um, right, so the torpedoes are set up. The angle on bow is now about 60. 50. 58. Let's start doing this, shall we? Let's do this solution. Angle on bow. So we want this. First we need range. Yeah, definitely Japanese. They weren't wrong about that. Range mark. 2000. Angle on bow is going to be about... What was it? 50. No, it'll be 60 now, but we'll leave it there. Getting a solution in this game isn't too difficult. Um, I find it harder in Silent Hunter 3. We know what speed she's going. She's going about eight and a half knots. So we're, we're, we've already sort of got got it all sorted here. Angle on bow is 61-ish. Just give them a moment longer and then we're going to get the, the range again. Range. Mark. Let's ask them what they think. Nine knots. I think they're pretty damn close. Uh, we're going to call that a solution. Let's keep that. And um, we're getting close now to when we want to fire. Uh, range is off a little bit. And I'm not so sure about that speed. We're definitely going to be firing a spread of four torpedoes here. Um, I don't like that angle very much. We could fix it, cheating a little bit with the map here, but, you know, about that. I like to just get an approximation rather than getting it exactly right because um, it's extremely tempting to use the map to get very, very precise estimates. Um, so we're going to say that's about 70 on the bow there. Angle on the bow. Let's turn this off just for a minute. We'll, re we'll redo this. Angle on the bow, 70. Range. Mark. We're going to leave that there. Keep. Let's have a look here. Yeah, I'm a little bit happier with that solution. I think we're ready to fire in about now. Okay, you can shut up now. I'm going to stop him talking. Where are you, old boy? Um, normal sweep. Let's follow nearest contact normal sweeps here. I need to learn the hotkey for that. Open tubes one, two, three, and four. Let's get the torpedo settings here. I I think that that's a little bit fast. We'll set them off to the right a little bit just to be safe. Because uh, I'm not entirely confident about that solution, but it's going to have to do. 
So let's uh, get the position keeper. No, that's fine. That's where we want. They're all set. Fire one. We're going to set the next one off to the right. Each one by a degree. As soon as he says torpedo in the water, we'll fire. Yeah, there we go. Fire two. So this one off to another degree. Torpedo in the water. Fire three. Two, three. Is that all we're going to need? In the water. <sighs> Let's fire four torpedoes. In reality, the submarine commanders would have fired, or in this situation with a ship that size, they probably would have fired all four tubes. So let's fire four. And now we just wait. Let them head to their target. In the water. That is two premature detonations right there. Three premature detonations. Bloody hell, all in, a, all in quick succession. That's really annoying. Well, there you go. That's, that's more, more what I'm talking about when I talk about duds. I can't believe it. Three duds? Are you kidding me? All in quick succession. That's very annoying. <laughs> oh, oh, that is so annoying. How many have we got left? So I heard three explosions. I saw three explosions. We've got one more torpedo still. <clears throat> excuse me. One more torpedo still going. Um, that's interesting because maybe the water pressure had something to do with that. The weather wouldn't have helped either because when we were running them higher at, you know, 10 feet or so on, they didn't seem to be doing that so much. That's um, extremely frustrating, but also extremely realistic. Um, and also look at that, the, the solution is off as well. So this one might be getting away. Uh, I guess we'll find out in a moment. We will find out. Can we see anything out here? Not really. A little bit. I'm just gonna drop the scope. Um, and actually use the hydrophone to, to hear what's going on here. Um, let's have a look. That might be an impact. We should be hearing it now. Boom. Okay, well we got one. So that's something. Um, I guess now what we'll do is we'll just uh, turn in and follow her around and uh, see if we can catch her. Uh, let's go up a head full again. We might actually go down a little bit as well, um, just to be safe. Go down to 80 feet. And uh, I'll let you know if she starts to sink. I'm not sure if that would have done nearly enough damage to send her down, but if we get a chance, we'll use the stern tubes on her as well. Um, though I don't like our chances. I guess we'll find out very soon. Um, I'll cut here for a while and get back to you uh, shortly. Well, she has unsurprisingly been uh, maneuvering here and she's all the way over here now. We shot, we hit her here and she came all the way up here. I don't know how many miles that was. We followed her um, about four kilometers. And now, I'll slow down a little bit. Um, now she's here. And she's, she's doing a loop, and it looks like she's trying to head back to her original course. But she is slightly damaged. Um, I think we did hit her, because we've got some fire on the deck here. Um, we may have set the torpedoes a little bit low, uh, or maybe she's just a tough ship. But definitely something caught fire, so she's got a fire on board. She's slowed down to two or three knots. Um, I think we're going to have another shot at her. Um, although... I mean, at the speed she's going, <laughs> we might as well take her speed again. Let's do this. Click. Three minutes. So let's do a little bit of time compression here. We're going one knot, which is about as slow as we can safely go. Uh, I like to always make sure I have at least one knot uh, on so that we can um, maintain our depth. Uh, the game will let you actually stop your submarine, but in reality, you wouldn't be able to do that. So I like to keep at least one knot at all times. Uh, one minute, 
to... Yeah, she's doing some pretty fancy maneuvering there. So we're back to normal time now. Five, two, one. So that will give us her approximate speed. Now she is maneuvering. So we're going to have to round up just a little bit. But before we got two and a half knots, yeah, she's going two and a half knots, maybe three knots. If you uh, consider that, you know, she is turning, so she might be going a little bit quicker. But one way or another, um, that is not fast. That's not fast at all. This time, let's just lower this scope for a little while while we're doing this. This time we're going to be using contact pistols. And we're going to set them to fast as well. High speed. Uh, we'll set this to 15. And this to 15. And that should get us a good... Let's fire three this time. Torpedoes at her. Now, in reality, it wasn't uncommon for... Um, crews to fire, you know, all their torpedoes, eight to ten torpedoes at a target and have every torpedo miss. So we should probably, I think that's fine. I think setting them all to around 15 is, is fine because that's half of her draft more or less. Um, all right, let's raise the scope again quickly. We need to get her angle on bow. We've got lines all over the map now, of course ready to go. Hello. I, I, I swear she's maneuvering. I don't know. It's hard to it's hard to know. So in reality you'd have the crew to tell you um, more or less what kind of angle if they're doing this, this is why I leave the uh, the map markers on because it helps you feel like you've got some guys who will say sir they're changing course and you go where which way etc. Et so it just helps you deal with things so the crew would be able to estimate her basic change of course and that's what I'm doing now I'm assuming that they're telling me that she's turning towards us so I'm like okay let's have a look um, all right well let's set her speed for, for three knots please just set that up ready for three let's say two and a half actually just there so what we need now is range mark this is the second time we've shot at this one but it is a big ship, so I think it is worth attacking. Range mark, and we'll let that run for a little while. Hopefully, we'll, let's do a bit of time compression because she's moving very, very slowly. Okay, so that's back to normal. Let's have another go in here, get another range mark. And hopefully the crew will have some idea of how fast she's going. What do you think, gentlemen? Six knots, they're completely off. That's totally wrong. I'm going to set it for three knots, and we're going to do an, a spread. Three knots. That's about that's about right. And we're going to do a spread again to the right just to be safe because I think she's going slower than that. Yeah, she's barely moving. I think we did damage her pretty badly. She's taking on water, and obviously, um, they're pumping out water. They're trying to put out the fires, um, and they're having trouble getting the the ship moving. All right. And they're still turning out that way. They're doing this kind of loop thing. Let's have the angle on bow again. Approximately. Angle on the bow is about 50, 55 now, let's say. Range mark. Angle on the bow. Five. Speed. Four. That's much closer to what they're actually doing. So let's say three knots. Um, and I think we can keep that. All right. We're almost ready to fire now. Let's, uh, let's go into this. Nope. What am I doing? Um, torpedoes. <sighs> they're all set. One, two, three three and we better put this one get this one ready as well we'll set this one to 10 and put it onto contact just in case uh, open tubes five six and seven and we'll be firing at a bit of an angle this time because I'm really really concerned about more duds uh, that was unprecedented having that many duds just all in 
quick succession, it makes me think that maybe this mod does actually model the, the duds properly after all. Angle on bow is now 60. Let's update that. Range mark. I think we can do this. This is fine. Estimate speed, three knots. Now that's the solution. Now we're talking. I'm confident with that. Yep, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Fire five. Fire six. Whoops, we forgot to put them there off at an angle. Oh, whoops, not good. So let's just put that there. That's not good at all. Uh, fire seven. And we might end up firing this one. No, uh, maybe not. I think it's going to be fine. Even with that angle offset, it's going to be absolutely fine. One dud. There you go. Wow. Bloody hell. Fire eight. So we're so close, we've already got impacts going. Yeah, that's done her much more damage now. Yes, much better. That is much better. So now that's going to send her down. So we probably didn't need that last torpedo after all, but that's okay. Eight torpedoes for a 20,000 ton ship, I think, is worth worth doing. Whoa, that sounds bad. We've got some big explosion. I think we split her down the middle there. Yeah, it looks like her back's broken. Let's have a listen in the hydrophone here. That sounds like a torpedo. Let's stop engines for a minute. Yes, sir. I'll stop. Yeah, I'd say that that's... We might get an impact sound in a minute, but... I'd say that's fine. I think... It's hard to see, but I think... Yeah, she's split down the middle and she's sinking. That is fantastic. We did it. We did a thing. So we've got a very large tanker there. It's not going to last too long at all. Could drop this scope now. And um, yeah, we can hear a sinking there. I think that last torpedo missed, but no matter. We don't need it. Beautiful work, people. Well, that was very exciting. I think we can stand down from battle stations now, finally. Uh, the men are going to be absolutely exhausted. Secure from battle stations. And we might stay down here for a little while. Actually, we'll go, rather than surfacing, we'll actually go down to 80 feet. Um, maybe even a little bit less, I don't know. We'll, we'll worry about that later. Um, stay down here for a while just to be safe. We did see a boat over there, so they managed to get one off, although I don't like their chances in this weather. Let's actually find out what we managed to deal with here. And interestingly, it was a European oiler, so I was wrong. That might be why we didn't do much damage with the, with the, um, uh, what do they call them? The, uh, influence pistols. Uh, we might have set the torpedo too deep, so the one that did hit didn't do a great deal of damage. It did go off, though, underneath the ship, so... Anyway, 10,000 tons isn't too bad, although eight torpedoes for 10,000 tons is uh, a little more than I would like to have used up. Uh, so this might be a shorter patrol than I was expecting. But I'm happy with that. That's, um, that was actually more enjoyable for me than pretty much any other attack this series, simply because it felt more realistic. It felt more like the torpedoes were against me, which, of course, if anyone knows anything about World War II history, um, American submarines were disastrously equipped with Mark 14 torpedoes. So, uh, definitely not a good thing. Um, but anyway, that was a lot of fun. Uh, we spent eight torpedoes on one ship, and now we're going to have to have a few, uh, a few uh, little talks with the uh, Bureau of Munitions when we get back to, <laughs> to port. All right, anyway, I'm going to continue along at uh, periscope depth, or even lower. Let's go down to 100, 100 feet. And I'll just stand in here until it starts to get a little bit more 
light once we're away from the area then I'll surface and make a dash for our patrol grid which is up here still we have to go all the way through the Flores Sea uh, before anything else happens um, so I might as well actually cut the episode here I think uh, because there's not a great deal more to report uh, 10,000 tons of shipping is a good start even if we did use up too many torpedoes so I will get out of the area and I'll see you next episode. This has been Kairos and thank you all very much for viewing.